Hey guys, good morning. I, I wanted to I wanted to ask you guys something this morning. I don't have anything uh, uber inspirational or different to any of those things to share this morning. But I did I did want to ask you guys something. So I oh, I, don't, I don't know for for about as long as I've had my own business, I've had the same thing that I struggle with. Uh, before I tell you this, admittedly, let me just say that I suspect that a lot of you will be very surprised that I struggled with this thing. Um, I suppose because from the outside, it just it all seems like you have it all together, right? But I've had the same thing, exactly the same thing that I struggle with. And I wanted to get a sense from you guys if any of you struggle with the same thing. And here's the thing I struggle with. I struggle with the extent to which I build a business and the extent to which I've created a job for myself. I think a lot of us, I think a lot of us who start businesses think we've got a business, but actually what you've done is you've created a job for yourself. So I'll give an example. If you are a graphic designer somewhere and you're employed, right? And then you leave your place of employee as a graphic designer and you start your own business as a graphic designer. And then when clients email you, you do the graphic design work. Well, guess what? You haven't really built a business. You've just created a job for yourself, right? If you are, it's if, for me, that's like, you know, you went from being a taxi driver to an Uber driver. You haven't created a, your own business. You've created a job for yourself. Um, it's very common in, in work areas and skill areas where you, the professional, the person doing the job, I see a lot of friends of mine who are in professional uh, services do this. So for instance, the guy who works at, I don't know, Deloitte as an accountant, then leaves Deloitte as, as an accountant and starts his own accounting practice but he's going to do the books. Well, he hasn't really created a business. He's created a job for himself. I have a friend of mine who's a really, really sharp guy, advocate, and um, uh, practices, uh, he practices, actually practices a whole, all over the place. Um, but he specializes in commercial law. And, and he and I were having this conversation and he went from being senior advocate, very well paid, one of the large firms, etc., etc., partner. And now he's, you know, now he's like, he runs his own firm, he does very well, but I was chatting to him last night and I realized that actually what he earns running his own business and what he earned as a professional, it's kind of like the same thing, you know? So for him, I suppose the the the, the benefit is that he gets to do stuff like travel, um, take days off when he, does, when he wants, to, wants to take days off without signing a leave form and those kind of things. But I said to him just yesterday, which is what prompted this conversation, you're not really an entrepreneur, you're just self-employed, which means you haven't really built a business, you've created a job for yourself. So I'm wondering, how many of you battle with this? There is a, a delicate line between working in your business and working on your business. So for instance, I get very operational in my business. I mean, you know, my, 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 uh, one, one of my maps often says to me, he says, he's like, you really shouldn't get into this level of detail, but it's because I've been in business for a really long time and, and I've been burnt. You've been in business for a while. You, if there's one thing you'll learn about people who've been in business for a considerable amount of time is that they get burnt. You, know, they get, you get cheated on, you get lied to, people promise you things that aren't going to happen, people try to steal your money. It's just the way business works. You know, it's not, you don't have bad luck. It's just in the nature of the beast. So I said to him, so the reason I get so d involved in the detail of the business is precisely because I don't want a situation where there are things happening in my business that I'm not aware of that are material to the future of my business. Don't get me wrong. There are things happening in my business that I'm not aware of. You know, uh, right now, for instance, it's, what is it? 9-11. 9-11. <laughs> hmm. Two seeds in a 9-11. It's 9-11 right now. I'm on my way into the office. Um, and, and, it, it, and I'm only on my way to the office now because I you know, had a meditation session earlier this morning. But so it's 9-11, I'm on my way to the office. I can't tell you how many times the phone has rung. I don't know. The team is kind of taking care of that. I can't tell you how many inquiries we've received. I don't know. The sales team is taking care of that. What I do know is they'll report to me as and when they need to report to me, right? But I think the point about it is, so there are things that when they happen in the business, I have to know. I absolutely have to know. And then there's a, there's a balance between how much do you know what level of information do you know and how much are you willing to live with not with not knowing simply said how much time do you spend working on your business so this is business development meeting new clients networking building your brand uh, building your your value chain building your ecosystem of suppliers with that stuff working on your business 
versus working in your business. Is that report sent to the client on time? Did we deliver that product on time? Um, was the client satisfied with the product that we delivered? Are we meeting our NPS scores with our clients? All of that stuff. Like how much how much of that do you do you do? And I I ask this to you guys because I've been thinking over the past two weeks that I should really post a video about this and then I realized that actually I don't have the answer to it so I can't post a video about about something that I myself battle with so for instance Mondays for me are very difficult days I don't like Mondays and I don't like Mondays because of how I've structured my Mondays but I've structured my Mondays that way because it's the best way to optimize my week so my Monday, I don't take any external meetings. I do no external meetings on a Monday. On Monday, I'm at the office the whole day. We start the office. We start at the office with an eight o'clock meeting between eight to 10 with a whole team. It's called our XCOM meeting, our communications meeting, all of the businesses, all the employees, all the line functions, all the managers, directors, everybody's in the room and we meet and we talk about everything, every single issue in the business. So everybody has line of sight. Then after that, I have my one and a half hour meeting with my CFO. We look at um, debtors, creditors, cash book. He wants me to do the cash book. Can you imagine? Go through the cash book. Then we look at our management uh, accounts. We look at our budgets and how far we are in the business. And then we discuss any other issues that might be extenuous to that. So for instance, are there any legal actions pending, either that we're taking or whatever, right? After that, I meet with my sales guy. Then I meet with my research team. You know, so it's like my Mondays are internal meetings. It's just internal meetings. Um, but the, the way that my Mondays are structured is I spend a lot of time with my people giving feedback, direction, strategy, and then what happens is they give me a lot of work. So that's why I don't like Mondays because then I end up with a to-do list that's twice the size it was when I typically was checking my week on the Sunday. But I know what it does. It sets up the rest of my week. So the rest of my week then kicks ass because I can take meetings. I can meet people. I can be in spaces. I can be on a platform delivering a keynote. I can do stuff and know that the other stuff is happening because everybody was communicated to at the beginning of the week. So it, that's kind of how I do it. And then my Fridays, and this is the trick, my Fridays, I don't do any internal meetings. My Fridays, I only do external meetings. So even the internal team knows, don't schedule a meeting with me on a Friday. Fridays are only external meetings and I use my Fridays to build what I call the ecosystem. So I'll meet with regulators in our space. I'll meet with somebody from one of the regulators. I'll meet with one or two of my board members. I'll meet with my major clients. I'll meet with potential major clients. I'll meet with partners or people just of influence that I learn from. And so my Fridays are purely for external meetings and I do it that way so that I have enough time to focus inside, enough time to focus outside. And then in the middle of the week, I do the other stuff. But the question I'm asking you is in the middle of the day, like 11 o'clock, how do you know, how do you not stop yourself from going, wow, why am I doing this? Like I should be doing something else. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just about how do you manage your time? Anyway, that's the thought. And I want you guys to share with me your thoughts and tell me what you think about this. I'll, uh, I'll leave this up to you for now. Hit me up. Let me know and comment with how do you do it? How do you set up your week? How do you set up your day? And which day of the week is your least favorite? I'd be very keen to know. All right, everybody. Have a killer day. What's the time we're over and out? Cheers.